first of all, I would like to thank all of you, and especially all the organizers of this symposium. This is the fifth uh, time that I am coming to this uh, symposium on nutrition, and it's a pleasure for me to share uh, the results uh, in relation to what we are doing in the last years. So my, the title of my, my, my presentation is Nuts and Cardiovascular Disease Prevention. Uh, perhaps this title, when I have seen this title, uh, I realized that perhaps it will be uh, Joan Sabaté, who will be the, 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 the speaker of this, of this uh, presentation, because he has the first one that has uh, discovered an association between the uh, consumption, the frequency of consumption of nuts and cardiovascular disease. But I would like to, to show you the results until now. So here you have my conflicts of interest regarding this presentation. So as you know, uh, the cardiovascular disease is a global burden. It's an important pub public health problem. In 2015, approximately 422 million of cases of cardiovascular disease exist and uh, 17 million of people death from this cause. It's the leading cause of global uh, death and over three quarters of uh, cardiovascular disease death take place in low and middle income countries. And major cardiovascular disease can be prevented. Can be prevented addressing behavioral uh, risk factors, uh, diet, obesity, and uh, physical inactivity, inactivity. So in the last years, we have put a lot of efforts in order to uh, treat the cardiovascular disease in, at this level, especially with, with people in the secondary prevention, and we have decreased the mortality also, we have conducted a lot of effort in controlling the risk factors, the hypertension, this epidemia, diabetes, etc. Not is the case of obesity, but in the rest, we have decreased the prevalence of these risk factors. But the, what is important probably is to move to the determinant risk factors uh, now, because the, the, to effective achieve the uh, degree of prevention possible, we need to move the emphasis upstream to address not only the causes of vascular disease, but the causes of the causes that are these risk factors. So we know that several uh, uh, food patterns have been inversely related to the risk of cardiovascular disease, especially those that have been related, the, those that are vegetarian, for example, is vegetarian or vegan diet, or the diet diet, or the Mediterranean diet. All these patterns have been in, inversely related to the risk of cardiovascular disease. And these plant-based dietary patterns highlight the intake of nuts as a key component, as legumes and other fruits and other foods. But nuts is one of the key components. And as you, you know, Nuts are very rich in energy, especially in fat, as you can see here, especially on monounsaturated fatty acids, in some cases polyunsaturated fatty acids, for example, walnuts, but also are very, very rich in fiber, in phytochemicals, and other uh, antioxidants, etc., that uh, makes this type of food uh, uh, and uh, that uh, a food group with a unique nutritional composition. So uh, today, uh, Penny, Chris Dederton, and also uh, Monica has addressed these beneficial effects that come from, uh, with uh, evidence that come from meta-analysis in relation to the lipid profile, to the blood pressure, to the glucose metabolism. But what happens with cardiovascular disease? So here you have the first studies that have been analyzed this association between the frequency of, of nut consumption and cardiovascular disease. The first one, this one of Joan Sabaté in, in relation to the Adventist Health Cohort. And in all of these studies, they have demonstrated an inverse association between 
net consumption, the frequency of net consumption and cardiovascular disease. As you can see here, 30% lower risk of fatal, fatal cardio, coronary heart disease when com they compare the, 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 the highest category of consumption versus the lowest. And here you have one of the last meta-analyses in relation to this. And uh, also you can see here uh, a protection, so uh, an inverse uh, association between the frequency of net consumption and total cardiovascular disease, but also cardiovascular disease mortality, as you can see here, total coronary heart disease with a high degree of, uh, uh, of, um, of uh, um, uh, heterogeneity, sorry, uh, coronary heart disease mortality, not in case of non-fatal coronary heart disease, uh, uh, an inverse association with sudden death, and a non-significant association in case of total stroke or total stroke mortality. So with this last meta-analysis that has been published, they say that uh, there is a quality of evidence, of moderate quality of evidence in relation to all-cause mortality, cardiovascular disease, morta uh, cardiovascular disease mortality and coronary heart disease mortality, a low evidence in relation to cardiovascular disease and sudden death, sudden death and very low in relation to total coronary heart disease, non-fatal coronary heart disease and total stroke and stroke mortality. And they say that we need more information in relation to the type of uh, 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 the, the type of NAT consumption and in relation to cardiovascular disease. But after this uh, meta-analysis, two important trials have been, two, sorry, two important uh, co cohort uh, studies have been appeared in the literature. This is one that has been conducted by Marta Guas Ferrer that has been working before some years ago in our group, uh, analyzing the three cores, the, NAS, the Nurses Health Study, the Nurses Health Study 2, and the Physician Health Study. And here you can see the, the, the exposures, uh, total nuts, pin nuts, three nuts, walnuts, and peanut butter, uh, in relation to cardiovascular disease, coronary heart disease, and stroke. And as you can see, they have observed also that higher consumption of total and specific type of nuts, at the exception of butter, uh, um, peanuts, uh, has, uh, was inversely associated with the risk of total cardiovascular disease and coronary heart disease. And also, the, this is another uh, cohort study that has been appearing in the literature this year, uh, has been published in HER, in relation to the Swedish adults, 6,001 6, uh, uh, Swedish studies uh, with 17 years of follow-up, and they have observed an inverse association with myocardial infarction, heart failure, atrial fibrillation, and also abdominal aortic aneurysm. But after adjustment by multiple uh, risk factors, uh, this, this uh, uh, adjustment attenuate this association, and only a linear dose response association has been observed with atrial fibrillation, and a non-linear association has observed in relation to heart failure. So, when we analyze all the meta-analyses that have been published in the literature, in the literature 13 meta-analyses that have evaluated this association between net consumption and cardiovascular risk, we found several limitations on these meta-analyses. And here you have some of them. In some cases, uh, they analyze the combining incidence and mortality of out outcomes. So, put together mortality for cardiovascular disease or uh, coronary heart disease. In some occasions, uh, there is a wrong definition of coronary heart disease mortality because they include, for example, mortality by heart failure or uh, other, other um, uh, types of mortality from, from, uh, car uh, from cardiovascular uh, view of, of point. Uh, in some cases, the analysis mixed uh, NATS exposure as categories and in some cases uh, as continuous. 
uh, they include uh, studies that did not compare the highest best versus the lowest category. In some cases, they compare uh, uh, intermediate categories of consumption. And in some, some meta-analysis, they include the studies analyzing the combining effect of nuts and seeds. And moreover, we have m m two more uh, uh, cohort studies that have been published in the literature. And it's for this that uh, we are conducting now a new meta-analysis in order to do, in order to understand this association. And this is, uh, this is uh, new data that has not been published yet uh, in relation to this. And here you have uh, uh, 25 studies that have been selected. Uh, and here you have the outcomes that we have uh, selected for this. Uh, this uh, meta-analysis uh, has been conducted by Nerea Becerra of our group in collaboration with other uh, people from our group. And here you have the results, the pre preliminary results in relation to nuts and cardiovascular disease. Only three studies, as you can see here, three comparisons. So, and we have observed an, an, an inverse association of so 15% lower risk of cardiovascular disease when comparing the highest versus the lowest category of consumption with no evidence of heterogeneity, as you can see here. In relation to nuts and cardiovascular disease mortality, 13 comparisons, and we have observed that nut consumption was uh, inversely associated, so associated with a 24% uh, lower risk of cardiovascular disease mortality when comparing extreme categories, and here you have the heterogeneity. Here you have the same in relation to coronary heart disease, seven comparisons, so 18% lower risk of coronary heart disease when comparing the extreme categories of consumption, in this case with a high uh, heterogeneity. Uh, here you have the same by uh, coronary heart disease mortality, 12 comparisons uh, with heterogeneity of 29%. Uh, and uh, also, uh, as you can see here, nut consumption was associated with 22% lower risk of coronary heart disease mortality. Here you have stroke, uh, in this case, no association with a very low heterogeneity. So nut consumption is not association with a risk, uh, with a risk of stroke when we compare extreme categories. Here you have stroke mortality. Uh, with a heterogeneity of 16%, 10 comparisons. So, and in this case, uh, we have observed an association, an inverse association. In case of stroke, uh, so this was a stroke, stroke mortality, also we have observed an inverse association with a low uh, heterogeneity, as you can see here. And here you have the same for high failure. Uh, with a low heterogeneity, but also two comparisons. And uh, in case of atrial fibrillation, also uh, protection that, uh, with a very low uh, heterogeneity, as you can see here, but only with two comparisons. So at the end, we have um, we, we use uh, uh, a meta-analysis of clinical trials, as you can see. Uh, there are good evidence in order that uh, tree nut consumption protects from cardiovascular disease, not for stroke, but by several endpoints related to cardiovascular disease. And in relation to the PREDIMED trial, PREDIMED trial, as you know, is we do not use the PREDIMED trial in order to understand the effect of nuts, because we, uh, the PREDIMED trial tests the effect of uh, two Mediterranean diet, what, one enriched with nuts and the other one enriched with uh, uh, virgin olive oil, in comparison to a low-fat diet. Uh, um, and in this case, uh, uh, we have published five years ago the, the primary results in relation to this in, in the New England Journal of Medicine, and we have observed a good protection. So those individuals that have been randomized to the virgin olive oil or nuts that we give for free for all the population, we have observed a 30% reduction in the incidence of cardiovascular disease. So uh, as I suppose that you know that you have seen, we have replaced uh, two um, uh, weeks ago this, uh, this uh, uh, results in New England Journal of Medicine because we have observed some imperfections in the randomization procedures 
for a little uh, a subset, a small subset of participants. Uh, uh, approximately 14% uh, of the participants, because uh, in, in, in 5.1% of the total sample, uh, we directly allocated uh, to the same arm of the trial the relatives of the same household. This is very usual in clinical trials because it's not possible to say to one of the members of the hospital, you need to, to do this in intervention and for, for the rest, with a placebo it could be feasible, but not in case of, uh, of, uh, of uh, a, a dietary trial. And also we have the, the discover that in one of the centers, some clinics have randomized uh, not individually the individuals. So they have randomized uh, 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 in a small subset of, uh, uh, of the clinics, the clinics directly. So when we have been aware of this, we have contacted with New England Journal of Medicine in order to explain these departures in the protocol, and we have agreed to uh, rerun and to reanalyze all the data that we have published before. And we have replaced the uh, results with the new data, taking into account these two, these clusters of members of the same household and the clusters in relation to the, uh, uh, the, the clinics that have been randomized directly to, the, to, the, to, 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 to one of the arms of the trial. And we have conducted several uh, analyses, several uh, sensitivity analyses in order to understand this. So using, for example, uh, propensity scores with 30 variables in order uh, to take into account the strata uh, of these uh, members of the household, household, etc. And the results, as you can see, are the same. So we have conducted the same with uh, the main model, but excluding, excluding the members of this center uh, that has randomized uh, not individually the, the individuals and, uh, the, and the couples, and the results, as you can see here, is the same. We have conducted more and more analysis, as you can see here, and the results are completely the same. And it's for this that we have agreed with the uh, New England Journal of Medicine to replace this because we uh, recognize that it's more honest to explain what it happens uh, uh, when we realize that some imperfections on the randomizations occur. So, and what, what it happens in relation to the PREDIMED trial? So, in case of cardiovascular disease, 30% reduction in the incidence of cardiovascular disease in those individuals that have been randomized to, uh, to the Mediterranean diet uh, with, uh, and we give for free nuts. In case of uh, peripheral artery disease, also we have observed a significant reduction. Also we have analyzed this uh, with propensity scores, etc., and this remains exactly the same, but not in case of atrial fibrillation and not in case of heart disease, as you can see in this slide. So also, in, in the, uh, Emilio Ross from the Hospital Clinico has conducted a sub-analysis in a subset of participants randomized in the Hospital Clinico in order to understand what it happens with the uh, uh, intima, carotima intima media thickness and plague. Of, uh, and uh, they, they have observed a beneficial effect also of, uh, of consuming nuts uh, and uh, being in the Mediterranean diet group uh, with, uh, with the nuts um, in relation to this uh, endpoint. So, <laughs> What, is, what are the potential mechanisms? Uh, we have been, have been explained it before. So the most recognized is the lipid lowering effect, which has consistently been demonstrated in several population groups using different types of nuts and study designs and methods. However, if we take into account this reduction in the LDL, LDL cholesterol, etc., uh, this reduced risk of coronary heart disease associated to nut, nut consumption cannot be explained only by this. So 
perhaps is because of several mechanisms that uh, can, be, can explain this reduction in cardiovascular disease. Uh, and here you have some of them. Uh, with, uh, they have uh, uh, effects on the cell function, in inflammation, and oxidation, and insulin resistance, and secretion, etc. And it's by, by all of these mechanisms that we can explain. So, in conclusion, many clinical trials have reported benefits of nut consumption on numerous cardiovascular disease risk factors, including blood lipids, lipoproteins, inflammation, oxidation, vascular function, insulin resistance, and glycemic response. The epidemiological evidence showed a strong beneficial relationship between nut intake and several cardiovascular disease outcomes, at the exception of stroke. The prevention with the Dieta Mediterranean trial is the only randomized clinical trial that has evaluated the effect of nut consumption in the context of a Mediterranean diet on different cardiovascular outcomes, and as you can see, uh, it protects. And more randomized uh, control trials are needed in order to establish the cause-effect relationship, relationship and identify the nutrients and the bioactive components responsible of these beneficial associations. And finally, the mechanisms of these salutary effects probably lies in the synergistic interaction of the many bioactive constituents of nuts, which may all favorably influence uh, human physiology. And future research on nuts will advance our understanding of their mechanisms of action, as well as provide better behavior change strategies for incorporating nuts into a heart healthy diet. Thank you very much, and especially uh, to my hospital, to the Faculty of Medicine, and all the members of my unit of research in relation to nutrition. Thank you very much.